You're listening to Nothing's Off the Table, the podcast where no subject is too taboo to discuss. Now, please welcome your hosts, Andy Barker and Lou Del Pre. We're switched. We are switched. That's does, all right. Does, does it confuse you? It's okay. Watch no. That. Oh, shit. Uh-huh. Just like that. Bam. But you know what I'll tell you? You know what I'll tell you the truth, though? It, it like it uh and i don't know if it's ocd or anything but you know it, that didn't bother me but you know what bothers me like right now i'm looking at the right and you're on the left is how it looks to me right if okay. we were sitting next to each other and we were playing a video game together like a racing game if i was looking cross screen I, that I, that would kill me oh, i yeah. would have to switch with you i would I, there's no way I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I had there's no really way that. I could sit to the right of you and look at the left screen and play. There's no way. <laughs> yeah, I get. I got so confused playing. Uh, we were playing Rocket League. Oh on, yeah, on Xbox, and we were sitting across. And I I can't do it. I'm sitting there I, every two three seconds. I'm looking at his screen, thinking I'm driving yep. his car. Yep, yep. I can't do it either, man. I, I, <laughs> I that 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 I will have to. We'll have to move seats or switch controllers. We'll have to do something. Yeah, that has but to be immediately, immediately fixed. But it's no big deal on here. No, no, here <laughs> I wasn't bothered. It was okay yeah. here. <coughs> anyway, well, it's Friday night, and yeah, we're an hour later tonight because yeah. uh, Liam had. Uh, well, he's he's playing on two teams this fall, so he's long story short, uh, and now we'll keep it short. Uh, he's got practice on Friday nights now, mm-hmm. so. Had to, had to shift things to the right, but anyway, we're we're still here. Yeah, I like herpes. <laughs> Get your encyclopedia yeah, out all you want; it doesn't matter. We don't care. <clears throat> anyway, so Lou, you've been you've been getting some games, man. I was, I was, I was behind the plate the other day. It was good. Um, I'm always, I'm, I'm always nervous. I won't see the ball, but <laughs> it's not, it's never a problem. But right. anyway, you know, but when I get down there, I'm like, man, what if this kid has some heat, right? Like this nine year old's gonna blaze it in there. But <laughs> I'm always like, what if this kid's got some heat and I can't see it? But no, it's good. I I can see it. Had a good game. Um, thankfully, no issues, right? There was no no major collisions out there, clouds of dust, or you know, <laughs> we're down nice. in the weeds now, like like you know, dash 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 eight of the rule, you know, <laughs> you know like right, trying to right. look at the interpretation. There was none of that. Coaches were cool. Kids played the game and we were out of there in two hours. Wait, so, so was that your first game? No, no. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't think no, so. No. I, it was my second time behind the plate, though. Oh, but I've, okay. I've done about 16, 17 games uh, on the bases. Excellent. Um, but I haven't. Uh, uh, that was my second time behind the plate. But all, actually, all this week I'm behind the plate. So tomorrow I have a game, um, two to four. I'll be behind the plate. And then Sunday, I have 11 to 1 and 2 to 4 hmm. um, behind the plate. And then I have tickets to go see Am I a Racist? Oh, really? Yes, I do. Sunday, 5, 10 p.m. at North Hill Cinema. Oh, that's cool, man. I, I can't wait to hear all about it. Oh, I think it's going to be fun, man. I did see What is a Woman. Uh, I don't know if yep. you did. Yeah, I, well, I watched it at your place. Oh, that's right. That's right. I forgot about that on your way to camp. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent oh man, movie. that movie was funny. <clears throat> I did. I'll tell you what. The one professor, though, there's one professor on there, and I never. And if I, you know, I'll just go on the record now, right? You know, but uh, um, he, I, I'll tell you, I don't agree with him, but I, I respected the fact that he sat down and tried to defend his position, and he established rules, and he was very <laughs> clear when he thought the rules of the conversation. I like. I respected, you know. Um, how he conducted himself. Yeah. Like, he they, Did he have glasses? They were sitting at a desk. And I think he, so. Yeah. He was the, and he was yeah. like, look, I'm not getting, you know, I'm only going to talk about this, you know, I'm not, yeah. you know, and, and he was talking about things and he was asking quite, and he was trying to, I felt like he was trying to answer, get his point across. Um, I didn't feel like he was combative. Um, I felt like he established rules for the conversation, if you will, mm-hmm. um, that weren't, you know, crazy. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I, you know, I always thought like, you know, that was a good, that was a good, uh, I wish there were more of that, you know. More. I'd have to agree with you. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, we've lost the ability to, to talk, you know, it's, it's nobody's listening. It's just spewing, spewing venomous vitriol and, you know, listening long enough to respond instead of 
actually hearing and understanding. Yeah. Yeah, people wait to speak. They don't listen. They wait to speak. Yeah, yeah. And it's, they've gotten so far away from any kind of actual dialogue. It's ridiculous. Oh, what's up, dude? (laughs) What's that? Yep, we're live right now. (laughs) So, uh, we've just been joined by the, the, uh, the only, the one and only, yeah, the one and only Liam. Oh. Yeah, well, I'm trying to hold two conversations at once. I can't even remember what I had. No, it's all good, man. But, uh, yeah, we were just talking about some, what the hell were we talking about? (laughs) Conversations, (laughs) conversations and lack thereof. That's right. That's right. Conversations lack thereof. No, we were, we were talking about umpiring and, and, uh, different things, uh, um, you know, up, Joe? A, little bit, a little bit about the pay, uh, the payments too, like like how much they pay for umpires, and that's yeah. just an interesting interesting thing. You know, some places are still cash, um, and some places go through the the website. Um, right. And my relatives were telling me, uh, you know, they they do the payments down here. You know, it's all like a cash based system. They're setting up up in the Northeast. It's more of a um, they're starting to use the computer. And you said where you are, they use the computer, right? Yeah, every everything is done electronically. Um, yeah. It's, it's, uh, you know, where I'm, where I'm umpiring at now, it's, it's little league, basically rec, rec ball. And, and I found that I'm, man, I am enjoying it yeah so much more, um, from, from the teaching aspect, uh, you know, mentor aspect of it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm maxed out on their pay scale. I think they start them at 30 bucks a game, you know, and I'm, I'm getting Whatever. 55 a game where high school ball well, was making a lot more, but. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm making so much more of an impact where I'm at now. Yeah, so, uh, and and I'm not doing it for the money anyway. Money's nice. Yeah, well, you can't say that, man. They'll kill you. Right. <laughs> the ones that are doing it for the money will kill right. you. <laughs> uh, those those are the ones that shouldn't probably be doing it anyway. No, I hear you, man. You know, I, we got a couple of young kids that umpire uh, college students. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, in between uh, uh, classes or you know um, summer break and stuff, I ran, I umpired with a couple of them in June when I was on the bases. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward. The Pennsylvania has pony ball. Um, it's uh, this it like started out of Philadelphia. It's like something our oh protect our youth. Um, yeah, protect our youth. And they had a small end, and then like. I, it was some sometime in the eighties or something, it went national and the end became bigger and it protect our nation's youth. Hmm. Um, base it was like keeping them playing baseball. So they're off the streets and out of trouble. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's I, called I, pony ball and PA. I remember hearing about that and then you broke it down for me pretty good last week. So, um, that's cool, man. It's, it's just, uh, just loving it, you know? Yeah. It's a good time. But, it's fun. But it's crazy too because uh, it's so so busy right now in our house because Isabel is doing cheer freshman cheer, so she's got her games that she's got to go to, and Liam's yeah. playing on two teams, so we got two practices, and then we usually have two games a week plus me umpire, and it's like wow, yeah, it gets busy. busy. It gets busy. Hey, you know one thing I'll tell you. I, I, I want to say is uh, in uh, I uh, second time behind the plate. Um, I like the big in I like the uh big goofy plastic simple indicator that costs like two bucks or you could find at the bottom of Fruity Pebbles. I like that one, man. I can see it. It's easy. You you know what? The the best gear in the world is the gear you're the most comfortable with. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean I I bought one of those like ones you can like, you know, um the the you could feel if it's you know two or three or one or four. And I was mm-hmm. like, you know, this is nice, but you know what? Like when I, I like, I don't have my glasses on when I umpire. I don't need them, mm. you know. But I can't see the indicator. So <laughs> I, like, like, like that one. I'm like, I think it's three. Like, I have to like, I start uh, questioning myself. You know, I'm like, yeah, because you, you know. So I, I was like, you know what, man? Yeah. You know, I just so happen to have this one sitting right next to me. Yeah, that's one I have. I don't like it. I, I love it, man. But I, again, I, it's I, personal preference. Yeah, personal preference, right? 
because I have sunglasses on that I wear that aren't prescription. They're just sunglasses. You know? mm. But yeah, I can't see the numbers on the small indicator like that. So I like the big goofy one where I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know. I, I keep I keep um, I probably got half a dozen in my bag just just oh, in sure. case, you know. Um, no, but this season's been it's been a lot of fun. Um, we, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna tell on them. I'm not going to mention any names, but our first first game of the season, before the game even gets started, we had an ejection. <laughs> it, it was, it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it because it's a great it's a great learning point. Yeah. Um. The umpire, uh, the, the plate umpire went down there and and uh, you know, basically it was a question about time. They were going to um start early. Uh huh. Coach says, well, you know, I thought we were supposed to bar- start at this this time. Who says we're going to start early? And he says, I said we're starting early. The umpire? Yeah. You know, and, it, and it, just like that, you know. And then the coach says, we well, don't have to be a dick about it. And he ran him. And so the reason I say it's a learning point is because, well, number one, that should have never, ever happen you know yeah. the, the umpire was wrong for what he the way he said what he said he didn't have to say that coach was wrong because he you know he got personal but i can totally understand his frustration yeah so and it actually got, <laughs> ended up getting overturned but it's like come on man seriously first game of the season you haven't even started yet God. yeah the guy that runs our league is like, uh, I asked him something about ejection or I forget. Um, do or I, oh, I asked him, do you, no, I asked him, do you do a report mm-hmm. um, after every game? Like, is there an, is there a report after every game? And he was like, oh no, man, no, no, you don't have to do any of that. He goes, just if there's an injection, he goes, then you just write, write something down. He goes, but I'll tell you, I goes, I've been on prior in 20 years, man. I've ejected three people. He's like, just work with them. They're fine. Man. They're yeah. Fine. <laughs> he's like, just saying, he's like, man. He's like, I've ejected three people in my career, man. He's like, they'll 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 settle. He's like, you know, they just want to play the game. Everybody just wants to play. Right. Granted, I haven't been doing as long as he has, but I've only ever ejected one person, and I, my hands were tied on that. You know. Yeah, I, mean, I you know, and I could see that, right? Like, like uh, I had a guy cursing. We told him not to curse. He stopped. Mm-hmm. But if he keeps cursing, I mean, there's little kids around. You right. know, I'm supposed like like that's the whole reason I'm there. <laughs> fairness and safety right <laughs> you know i can't have some dude popping off you know yeah all day long the the only ejection i've had was a malicious contact oh there you go i didn't have a choice hands yeah. hands are tied on that one you gotta go but uh i i feel that if if i can't defuse the situation and if i have to eject someone i failed me personally yeah. So I can, I feel like I can de- defuse and deescalate almost any situation. Yeah. I mean, if I can get them crazy people to come down off the ledge, I think I can handle a damn little league ball game. <laughs> oh, I know. I know, man. Some of these, some of these parents are crazy, but you know, you know, after every game, I always thank the coach for volunteering. You yeah. Know, I'm just trying, you know, you know, I'm new. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to, uh, um, you know, just get people to, uh, you know, maybe associate kindness when they see me so that maybe they're not, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> like, cause the problem, Andy is it's not that I don't want the conflict. I want it so bad and yeah, it's yeah. not good for you and it's not oh. good for me. <laughs> Just got to push it down, man. Just push it, I know. push it way <laughs> down. It's not I'm, good. I'm to the point where I, I, uh, I have much, much calmer. I would much rather just kind of coke and joke yeah. because I know the other side of that is that uh, switch is just too easy to be flipped. Oh, and when, that's what once I'm it's saying, flipped, man. I can't, it's, I can't I, I, control it. I keep thinking like, well, this is what I trained for. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm going to double egg the shit out of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he has no idea it's coming. <laughs> he doesn't know. Right. He's not right. going to be able to wipe his ass when I'm done. I'm going to break both arms. <laughs> how, about, how about a nice Taitoshi under the home plate with your fucking grape? 
Yeah. Damn. Like, like he has no idea. Yeah. <laughs> he but, doesn't expect a 50 year old to be practicing double legs three times a week. I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had a, uh, so far this season, it's been, it's been great. I mean, good, good. Yeah, hey, really speak, 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 speaking of, speaking of suboptimal. <laughs> <laughs> How did you see that debate? <laughs> yeah, yikes! You know, I uh, I didn't see it live because I was working <coughs> on the plate. But um, I came home and I started watching the replay. I, I just I couldn't get through it. <laughs> it was rough, man. It was rough. I couldn't. I don't think it moved the needle. I, I the, people are saying like there's no real like nobody's really moved. Like nothing's really shifted. Well, I'll tell you, I saw the betting odds jump in her favor after the debate. Well, you know, she proved that she can front this thing for sure. I mean, that was the problem with Joe Biden. Joe Biden couldn't front the steal. I yeah. mean, no, no one would have believed 81 million votes again with him. No yeah. one. And right. so, you know, this when she went out there and she was cogent and didn't fall on her face and, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, alleged, there's alleged, you know, uh, reports that ABC News um, and I want to be clear. Um, the affidavit says ABC News gave her the outline of the direction of questioning and uh, gave her a guarantee that Trump would be fact checked live and that she would not, which is why she came in so bold with all that Charlottesville lies and everything that, that, that those have been the Charlottesville lies. The biggest one of all that's been debunked even by Snopes, right? Even by Snopes, it was debunked. Right. But then you had Trump say. It was debunked by Sean Hannity <laughs> and Laura Ingram <laughs> and Jesse Waters. And you're like, uh, maybe, but <laughs> yeah, not, not the individuals to, to back you on that one a whole lot. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just, anyway, you know, Kamala, Kamala, uh, it may, maybe it was a great debate. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. It could probably be the worst debate in history for me personally. I mean, it was ter It was terrible. Like they, 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 they absolutely ganged up on him. But in all honesty, man, I mean, I think I'd do pretty well against all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do, man. I do think I'd do pretty well against all three of them. Very easily, man. Very easily. I think. I mean, I, you know, I would. I mean, Kamala Harris. I'm going to give each person six thousand dollars. Yeah, where, 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 where's that coming from? How are you going to do that? Or how about what's the that fifty thousand dollar small business loans? I, I, I mean, it, it's just. It, or, or, um, I mean, a ton of people had a ton of recommendations on, on how to handle certain things and stuff like that. But I mean, as far as like, like David Muir and them, like fact checking, as soon as she said Charlottesville, I would have been like, uh, David, <laughs> right. Uh, I know, I know, you know, I felt he was holding back for some reason. I who Trump. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, man, because, you know, if he came off hard on her, then it, that would have been the headline, you know, Trump misogynist, yeah. you know, that would have been far worse than looking like, you know, but now now you see Kamala running around. People are. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. Right. But I'm going to make a prediction. People, I, I, I watched her rally today on TV mm -hmm. and um, it was insufferable. It was in it was terrible. Was it the same like, old bullshit? No, she is arrogant now. Oh, she boy. is arrogant now. And mm. it is bad, man. Like, I was listening to her like, oh, man. You know, all it takes is one good reporter to ask a couple of questions, and she is toast. She is well, talking so much crap, but has nothing behind it. But you know why she's talking crap? Because well, no one's going to ask. No yeah. one's going to follow up. There was zero follow-up with me and them, but they were all over Trump. How about, so pathetic, How about the love question, man? How about the love question? Like, like a like vice vice president Harris. Trump has vowed to do X, Y, and Z. What do you think about that? Instead, like, like, like can we get a policy question? Like, can we get a? Uh, I don't know. I, I I think it was very obvious to everyone. You, you know, if it's not obvious to you, and you thought it was a fair and balanced debate. I'm just going to go ahead and say there's something wrong with you. No, I think people, I think people know, right? People, people know. People, most people know, but there's the fringe out there. 
<clears throat> and well, those I, the, that's the one I'm talking about. Well, I think I think I think that this was this is why they're excited, and this is why you saw the betting odds change. Frankie V. Kamala Harris proved she can front this. Right. She can uh, get within the margin of cheating. Yeah. Right. If you will. Yeah. Like no one would believe by like, you know, if we start counting and Pennsylvania shuts off again at midnight and everybody shuts off at midnight and all of a sudden we have, you know, truckloads of votes showing up and courts are saying, oh, we got to count them all, man, even though they're spelled in Cyrillic. Um, that's <laughs> Russian, or, you know, <laughs> anyway, so, the, so, you know, they'll say, they'll say all that. Right. And, and then, um, you, you know, what'll happen, what'll happen is they'll just back off. Like, like it'll never occur. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll, 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 they'll bring it all up. They'll do it. And then they'll just walk away. Sounds really familiar. <laughs> I think, I, 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 I think mm. so. Mm. I think so. Because, um, she makes it look like. Um, yeah, maybe that maybe, maybe people did switch, right? Because she doesn't sound half dead and instead of Biden would, they would have been like, oh no, man, there's no way. There's no way you found 500,000 votes. Well, there's well, no that's, way. That's why they, they pulled the coup that yes. they, they pulled. I say to any liberal voter, any liberal progressive voter, just walk me through how you voted for your candidate for president. Just walk me through how you voted for them. Just walk me through it. And I'll tell you what, as a Ron DeSantis supporter, I'll walk you through how I, how I ended up with Trump. But but walk me through how you voted for Kamala Harris, and I'll walk you through how I voted for Ron DeSantis and ended up with Trump. Well, Trump's a racist. Well, I, I just don't think they can. I, I mean, if you that don't would understand, be the response. I, I'm just saying though, if they don't understand that Kamala Harris was put there, you know, like 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 they put her there. Is it? <laughs> Is it so much that they don't understand or is it just 100% complete total denial because of tribalism? I think it's worse. I think it's worse. I think they're confident in the people behind her. I mm. think they know she's a sack of nothing, but they're hoping it's Obama behind her. I think is what they're hoping. I think they're mm. just banking on, well, you know, Obama's behind sure. her. And he, she's got all of Obama's people, so she won't really be making decisions anyway, right? Because word, word on the affidavit, too, is that uh, Joe Biden's been completely removed from, uh, um, Joe Biden's been completely removed from, like, the president. Like, he gets his what? mandatory daily briefing, but he's been completely removed from the processes. It's, like, he's, it's he pretty, not, he's doing nothing. It's pretty obvious. Uh, yeah. And, he's, he's spending all his time on the beach. You know, right, right. And, 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 um, or, or campaigning. And so that's why they're saying right now, you know, is the government will run the way it's running right now. Right. With Blinken, Blinken making state department decision, Blinken sets foreign policy. Um, the other guy, the other guy was chief of staff, Ron Klain or somebody else. Um, but yeah, anyway, there's, there's like three or four main players, <clears throat> um, at the direction of Obama. <clears throat> which we never figured out who Obama's at the direction of, right? Because he's not the main guy either. But point being is, is I, I believe, I believe all of these progressive voters, right? Except for the stupid, right? But the non-stupid, the non-stupid and above, right? Because <clears throat> I have met some stupid people. I mean, I have met some very poorly educated people, man. Just poorly educated. It's not their fault. God bless them. But holy shit, man. Holy shit. If they couldn't speak English, they'd have died a long time ago, man. <laughs> a long time ago. Um, <clears throat> because we propped the week up. But <laughs> I'm not here to say it's I'm not here to say it's good or bad policy. I'm just here to say we propped the week up. And uh that that's uh you know it's true. Sometimes those chickens come home to roost. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> sir. <clears throat> but I think all the progressives and up who 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 are not stupid and up. They just are comfortable that she's a figurehead. Like, it's okay if she's not in charge. I know who is, or I believe I know who is. So it's okay. And I like them. And I'm okay with deceiving everyone. I don't care, right? Because they did a survey. 78% of Democratic voters think it's okay to lie to prevent Trump from winning the election. And it's okay to cheat in an election. 
right? You can go look all those things up, man. They pulled him. They said, yeah, so it's, it's absolutely okay to lie. It's absolutely okay to cheat if it so keeps Trump out. Fucking ridiculous, man. Yes. Yes. So, so they're okay with that. They're okay with Kamala Harris not being anybody like not having any policy, right? If you look at Twitter, right, which, which really shouldn't because majority of Twitter accounts are overseas, right? And Twitter's not a window, right? I, th I think you do. Michael Malice talks about this a lot, right? Like how television is not a window. Okay. Watching the news is not a window that is just as choreographed, just as edited, just as put together as, you know, the big bang theory. Right. But there are people in this world who believe they are <clears throat> looking through a window and you're not, you know. Um, so I think they're OK with that. They're just OK with her being the figurehead like that's OK. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> they know they're they know her track record. And there has to be some pretty strong suspicions, if not just downright open knowledge of who really is pulling the strings. <clears throat> I think it's probably Soros myself. Yeah. A conglomerate, a conglomerate, yeah. total you, conglomerate. You, yeah. yeah. I, I, and I think, and I think the reason they're coming out of the woodwork, right. And, and, um, you know, this is my theory. Um, I haven't heard it from anyone else, but I mean, or maybe, maybe I've heard pieces of it and put it together. Who knows? Right. But Bob, I, I, cause I, and the reason I do this is I always want to give credit where credit's due, right? 90% of what I have is not original. I got it from all other places and just put it together. Right. Um, but I think, um, oh man, see talking about how I put it together. I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think anything. <laughs> well, we were talking about who's pulling the strings. <clears throat> Oh yeah, yeah, conglomerate. Uh, um, yeah, conglomerates and uh, and, and world. Uh, yeah, World Bank people. But yeah, I do uh, like George. Like you were saying, George Soros, and I was saying, yeah, I think it's. I think it's a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah, I do. I think it's a bunch of people that um, ha have the uh, world world order in mind. And then he here's here's what I think is the hardest part to figure out, though, is who who's dictating, like who's involved, and who's just thinks they're being helpful. I think that's very hard to separate. Who who's dictating is definitely no one we've ever heard of. Right. Right. If, keep keep us talking, Luke. Well, I just think you know the, the I, I I I think the biggest thing, the biggest problem that we look at, and the biggest uh, um um thing, like like when you look at the media, right, and you're like, oh, the media is um you know it's all left leaning and um. You know, it's purposeful and it's by design and it's all these things, right? I mean, it, it, if you look at the history, it's like Bernard Goldberg wrote the book Bias, right? It's a very, very good book. Talks about working under Dan Rather. Um, and uh, Bill O'Reilly's commented on working under Dan Rather before, too. Just really biased guy. They used to call him the Dan. Um, and uh, anyway, if you ever did something he didn't like, you're out, you know, um, as long hey, as you're pushing the narrative. Uh, we, we have a caller on the line. No way. We do. Joe, you there, buddy? What's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Not that much. Hey, hey long time listener, first time caller. Because <laughs> you're caller number 10. That's right. Hey. <laughs> Live tonight, Virgin Sacrifices at 3 a.m. You've won. <laughs> Tell him what he's won, Johnny. <laughs> uh, do, do I win a CD from the closet? You win a pair of CDs nuts. VHS, the other player. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, dude? Nothing, man. I just figured to chime in and see what you guys are up to and Get in with the with the combo. Oh yeah, we're just talking about uh, the new world order. Yeah, yeah. I'm out. I'm out in Lakeland, Florida, right now. I'm I'm going through a three day tryout camp for uh, Florida College Umpires. Oh, excellent. Oh, nice. So, yeah. So next two days will be uh, games, and they assess us from there, and hopefully they bring me on and go from there. Well, normally I'd say good luck, but this time I'm going to say make your own luck. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, they told us it's our it's ours to lose, so it's you know what I mean. Exactly my point. You got it, man. Yeah, appreciate it. I know, but I uh, you, I, I'm enjoying it, man. You know, I'm I'm new, and I tell them, I tell them, I'm like, man, yeah, you know, I me, mean, you probably smell the the new car. I probably smell like a new car. <laughs> you know, but but I have that's so much fun that's doing not the it. Smell I would describe you as, but okay, exactly. Yeah, right, right. I quit smoking five days. Did I tell you that? I didn't tell oh. you that. I quit. This is my fifth day of no smoking. Nice. Nice. Yeah. 
Nice. Just keep going. Still, mo- uh, you're still smoking pole though, right? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Get it. Anyway, yeah, uh, that's fantastic, man. Um, you're you're gonna crush it. I ain't worried about it. Uh, I'm not even gonna lose sleep uh, at all. Yeah. Over it. But, right. Um, I, I wouldn't anyway. But I mean, uh, no, no, you you got this. You, you got this. Um, yeah. Oh, I heard you had a pretty motivated phone call today. Oh, uh, which phone call? Yeah, a little bit of mentorship action going on. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, with Dan. That's right. Uh, so, yeah. So how'd that go? That, that was good, man. That was pretty good. Um, pretty much told the kids my story. Um, for, and I talked to Dan actually just recently too. I kind of hit him up, you know, it, I didn't did talk to him earlier. I was, was busy and I hit him up again tonight and said, Hey, how do you think that went? He said, we're, we're well, because those are the two, those are two of the most more reserved kids that they've give got. And uh, by the end of the conversation, they were really kind of starting to open up. So oh, nice. I think kind of kind nice. of started getting through to them a little bit and making them see things. And 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 I've told my story to to Dan, and he's like, "Dude, you're like the poster child for what we need." Because I, I went from high school dropout, GED, jail time, military service. Uh, you know what I mean? Retirement. It, it just I, it just kind of works out for I guess for a lot of kids that are just kind of in that. Yeah, in that that no zone of you know uh, of where do I do where do I go I'm not sure I can do this. Well, most of them think that um, they're they're the only ones that's ever gone through this, right? So it's it's nice to to hear success stories of, of people that were in their shoes. Yeah, well, good on you, man. Yeah, yeah appreciate. It. I told him, I said, look, whatever, whatever you guys get in at, you know, even if you guys get in on the ground level and you guys are, you know, painting boats or, you know, mopping floors, whatever. I said, there's always room for growth somewhere. So you don't have to stay in the rate you're in. You can always look to to cross rate into something else. You know, you get a degree, you can go to OCS. There's other things you can do if you feel stuck, especially in the first few years um, of being in. So you know, don't let it get, get you down. If you don't feel like you're going anywhere, there's always another opportunity you can look at. Yeah. Oh, show. Mm-hmm. Oh, show. It's so different. Um, I, I got invited to work with the, uh, chief selects, the reserve chief selects out here. There's a reserve center. And, um, you know, it's a lot of retirees that come out to help. Them. I noticed that that's really cool. You don't see that a lot in the mm-hmm. active duty. Um, messes it's a, but right. it's a lot of retirees and these guys are driving man to get, make sure these chiefs you know these chief selects get an experience i was very very impressed by that um to say that up front um but uh yeah. i got there and uh there's only a couple of us that were active duty uh and it's you know there's always a difference between a little bit of a difference between reserve and active duty and i told the guy i said i'll tell you this man I never, when things were equal, let somebody tell me they were senior to me. And, and uh, you know, I was with this look like I, I never like in a room full of chiefs or, mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever. I never, I never let somebody tell me they were senior. We're, we're all chiefs. I right. said, but I, but I have told people I'm senior to them. <laughs> and they always like, look at me and I'm like, I'm just telling you right now, I'm coming in like a freight train. And if you let me, <laughs> I'm running right over you, man. I'm just telling you that right yeah. now. <laughs> and they and they all have these wide eyes and the reserve chiefs who are great dudes but they don't get a lot of this stuff either you know they don't right. get a lot of the intense <laughs> like and so you know they're looking and i'm like I, I have thing and i and i further explain i have things to do man i gotta get it done i don't have time to figure out who's i'm in charge when i walk in the room i'm in charge until someone else is i'm alpha till i meet one <laughs> <Like that. laughs> I'm here. I mean, you ain't wrong. <laughs> That's great, man. <laughs> Speaking of a little bit of mentoring, though, um, Lou, I don't know. I don't know if you ever met. Did you meet my friend Ricardo? <clears throat> Ricardo Tubbs. He promoted me lieutenant. I don't know if I did or not. I I, I may have very briefly. Um, I know. I know you've talked to him at least probably on the podcast. Yes. No. I I, I know. I know the name. I know the person, and I and I have a visual. Okay. Like I, like, I, like I, I wouldn't trip over him and not be like, Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> but, uh, so his, uh, his stepson 
joined the Coast Guard. Just graduated from boot camp. And uh yes, we do, Frank. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and uh so they drove out two days ago. Uh Ricardo just left this morning, but um mm-hmm. his his son is now stationed here in St. Louis and he's on the uh the sister ship of of my neighbor's boat. So we're hooking him up, you know, we're we're getting him all squared away. Yeah. Uh good good kid, you know. I told him he can stay here as long as he needs until he gets, you know, situated, all that crap. So it's just, uh, you know, you, you find, yeah, we're retired, but now we're, you find ways to give back, you know, to still, still matter at least to somebody. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. exactly. It's pretty cool. It's, it's cool. And, uh, <clears throat> I, I told him that he's going to be the saltiest fucking seaman by the time he gets to his ship next week after hanging out with us. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. We'll get you so we'll get you up to speed there, shithead. <laughs> yep. Motherfucker was standing at attention on my back patio the other day. I'm like, <laughs> knock it the fuck off. Oh man. It, it's fun. It's fun to see the next generation. It yeah. is, man. And and the motivation and the drive, you know? Yeah. You know, I, I remember when I had that. <laughs> yeah. It's a long time ago, but I remember it, I think. Anyway, yeah, no, Frank, you're, you're, uh, man, you're spot on, dude. Frank wrote in here, need more chiefs and less E nines, or how about guys trying to make E 10? There's no E 10, right? No E 10, no E 10 fellas. Oh, but they try. Oh man. Not all of them. No, the best, uh, the best cob I ever, ever worked for, ever had was a red stripe cob, red stripe. Oh yeah. 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 You know, he had. He was on his fifth or sixth Cobb tour when I got to the boat. He he was he was a fucking master chief, man. Let me tell you, hated In every <laughs> every sense of the world. He he didn't take crap from anybody. He looked out for his sailors. Uh, you know, it was it was a fun mess to be a part of. I remember we're sitting in the we're on we're on deployment and we're sitting in the. Uh, the goat locker and cap comes down and he tells tells the cop we're gonna do something. Cop says, No, sir, we're not doing that. He said, Yes, cop, we are. I said, No, sir, we're not. That's fucking stupid. We're not fucking doing it. You know what the captain did? Turned around and walked out. We didn't do that shit. I, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? That's that's at the point when you know what are you gonna do to me? Not a damn thing, you know? You're going to confine me to a ship? Yeah. I mean, one successful Cobb tour is, is incredible. When I, when, go ahead. That dude, at that at that many, you, you know that boat better than anybody. Mm-hmm. So it was just pretty that, funny, but. That, that's what I, you know, when, when I, when I knew I was right, I would tell people, you know, just put your name clearly on the, on whatever paperwork you generate, because I want people to know it was you. <laughs> that's right. I want them to know in the end it was you. <laughs> right. Please, please. You know, when you know you're right, man, when you know you're right. Oh yeah. Funny, funny thing. One of the genuines, right? First year genuine, really nice guy, really good guy. Um, you know, I was a crew member on the Constitution. Right. So I get there and I am talking about something. This is the first night and I'm talking about something um, about the duel of Stephen Decatur. It's one of my favorite stories. I love it. It has good lessons for leadership, in my opinion. So I'm talking to them about how I would like to tell them about it. Let me know when they're training. Right. You know, I'm just asking them simple questions that, of course, they cannot answer. <laughs> they have no idea when they're waking up. They have no idea. They have just no idea on anything, right? They're just <laughs> completely, they've forgotten. <laughs> you, know, you know how it is, man. Oh, yeah. When you get the chief selects, they've just, compl- as soon as they're selected, they forget everything. Yeah, just you turn into a blabbering idiot. Oh, my God, man. So all I'm trying to do is figure out when is the next time they're getting together to do training, and I will come. And I will give a 15 minute presentation. Okay. It took me, I, I shit you not. I got my answer seven days later and not from them. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, so anyway, long story longer. Um, 
the 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 Jalen there, right? I I I don't say anything about being on the Constitution, but I brought some stuff with me, right? Like I brought the crew car, I brought some, you know, just little things. Like if you know, I don't know what's going on, right? So I have hip pocket. I I just come prepared. I'm a chief, right? I'm a chief. I come prepared. Right. Long story longer. Um, dude, uh, um, dude, dude uh, starts telling me about the Constitution, um, and oh, and uh, asks me about the seventh frigate, right? And I'm like, ah. I don't know, but he's like real excited. And I'm like, ah, I never heard of that, man. And and he's like, no, it's this, it's that, it's that. And I'm like, ah, I don't know, buddy. And so I pull out my crew card and I'm like, ah, I don't know. And I, and I never heard that, you know? <laughs> um, so, but he's real excited, right? And, and so what pops my radar and what I end up teaching one of the guys later is, did you see how excited he was to tell me this information? He was 100% sure I didn't have. Right. You know, he was super excited. I said, that's what threw my radar up. Right. Because I was at that command and to trade in information on that ship. That is, that is the, 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 the currency. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what younger sailors use to lord over senior sailors. Right. Their knowledge of the ship. Right. That's the dolphins. Right. When, when you, yep. when you're cleared to give your tour. So you got E3s talking, you know, smack to E5s oh, and E6s. Yeah. Till they the get their, right, yeah. Till they get their tour, um, not as bad as the dolphins, but it was bad. I wanted to murder several of them, <laughs> having come from the FMF, and I knew they were not anyway. Uh, many <laughs> of them, many of them had come to Jesus moments, but uh, anyway, I that was that's what raised the hair on the back of my neck. Was like, wait a minute, look how happy he was to rub that in my face. I know other, I, I mean, who wouldn't be? Right. If you had that, who wouldn't be? I said, something's wrong with that information. Right. So I consulted the book. <laughs> and uh, um, a a anyway, long story longer, you could make it. You, you can make a case for either. Right. You can make a case for either. But because uh, I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to tell a brother he's completely wrong. And, and I left it to him to call the museum because <laughs> if I call the museum, I won't say it like he would. <laughs> you, you know, you know what I mean? So I yeah. want him to call the museum. But according to the textbook, the Bible, no, there is, there's only six original frigates, man. You don't have a seven. And that's why I was like, I knew, I knew, you know, I, somebody would have rubbed it in my face earlier. Right. <laughs> that's what I was trying to teach the chiefs. Somebody would have rubbed it in your face earlier. <laughs> you, know? you know, it's very rare. You find a zebra in a herd of horses. It's very rare because they would have rubbed it in your face earlier. <laughs> yeah. That's the world we live in. That's hilarious, man. Yeah, it, you know, I, I would have, if I would have been there, I would have been crying bullshit because I know you and I know your love of history and I know, well, I've, I've heard a lot of your constitution storage anyway. Mm. And in the back of my mind, I would be thinking there's no fucking way he's getting one over on Lou, not on the constitution. No way. So I would have, that would have, Raised a bunch of flags for me as well. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, uh, I, the first thing I thought of was I know five, like five different sailors went through my head as who would have rubbed that fact in my face. <laughs> I was like, this guy would have done it. This guy would have done it. This guy would have done this guy. No, this guy would have hung that over my head like a fucking, you, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. So I was like, why did nobody hang it over my head, man? And I actually did call my buddy who was the bosun on the ship. And I was like, you ever hear this crap? And he's like, no, nah, man. He's like, but uh, I, it, he goes, I would have to look in this book. And I was like, oh, shit. I still have that book. And I found it. And what the book says is it was built off the plans of it, but it was never a part of the original requisition of six. But it huh. was finished before two of the original six. Um, and it was given away as a gift. So it's like a, it's like an afterthought, but it's not considered one of the, the book says it's not part of the original because it's not part of the initial commission and funding. And it was promised by somebody like it, like what, what, so basically in history, what happened is we promised it to the, the, the triple E pirates. We promised that ship because we were having a delay in supply delivery. And when they went back to the Congress, they were like, Hey, he promised the ship and they're like, well, I guess we have to do it then. But <laughs> so that that's what, and that's what the book says um, happened along the historical lines. They were like, so it's often referred to, but it, they said it's not really a part of it's six frigates. Yeah. Interesting. 
But I would leave it to the Constitution is what I told my brother chief. I said, I would leave it to the Constitution. And I thought you should probably call instead of me because I'll be like, is this bullshit true? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they might say no just to get me off the phone. <laughs> like, right. You know. But if you call and have a case to make, you know, you might, you know, who knows? You know, I said, so it's better if you call. <laughs> and he probably won't. I don't know. I, I, I was going to leave him the book and I forgot I took it home, but uh, I'll see them at the khaki ball. Um, they have one in Pittsburgh. It's a, it's a second annual. I bought two tickets. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. One by accident, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I told him, keep it as a donation. Um, <laughs> my fault. And uh, anyway, so I have two tickets. <laughs> um, so I'll be going down to the ball, but I'll, I'll give him the books too, because he's into history too, man. And, and he knows a lot. He knows a lot. And, uh, um, we had some wonderful conversations, man. One, and in fact, maybe I can get him on here uh, one of these nights, and um, we can go through a little bit of of uh, of the history. Maybe, maybe you could, <laughs> maybe you could nope. get us to argue. <laughs> well, that'd be fucking great. Uh, now, is he is he a select or is he? Uh... No, he's genuine. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's genuine. We were talking. Yeah, no, I wouldn't bring a select on here, but they're, no, they're not really people. <laughs> you know. <laughs> When you're a student, when you're in a student status, you're not a person. Nobody cares right. about you. Nobody nah. cares about your IDC school. You're long, right? My pay's fucked up. I, they'll fix it at your next command. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, we only handle staff here. <laughs> then, then you get orders, and you're like, "Hey, I'm here. I'm checking in. I just, you know, weren't you just a student? Yeah. Well, oh, didn't you? Didn't you hear? We only do students now." <laughs> you, you guys destroyed. complain so we only do students staff is over at the main <laughs> you know that's what would happen <laughs> oh of course of course yep you're uh well, that's why we call you slugs because you're yeah like lou said you're not even human you're not a person you're not even human fucking beings like i told my wife don't <laughs> name it <laughs> <laughs> Don't name it. Oh my god! <laughs> Can't name it. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna think it's somebody. <laughs> That's right. And then we're gonna have to listen to it, right? You gotta teach it and feed and it. And... You can go through life with NMN. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. You can go through life with that. <laughs> Actually, I don't think that matters anywhere but the military. Has a judge ever intervened in a naming? I mean, I've heard some outrageous shit. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard outrageous crap, man. I, I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. My, my cousin, Chlamydia, that's a beautiful name. Come on, man. I'm trying to drink coffee. That's stains. <laughs> <laughs> this, this ain't water. Man. This is coffee stains, man. Yeah, but... but <laughs> Have they ever intervened, man? Have they ever intervened? Mm, nope. I'm 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 gonna go out on a limb and say no. <laughs> Joe? No. Yeah, I don't think so. Anyway. What uh other other than uh after you after you get done with your your tryouts, what what plans you got? Well, so there's there's the two plans. There's the one where they say better luck next time. And I just moved back on to high school and everything else I'm doing now. And the other plan is, uh, they say if they, if they like you, they want you back. I got to come back in two weeks for another, uh, three or four day camp, uh, for three man mechanics, I believe, and more in depth, uh, book work. And then there's one in October where they're bringing some, uh, I forget what his title was, some guy from Kansas City or something like that, some D2 head director or something or other. Is it John Brower? Uh, I did not, I, I don't recall what I said his name was. That sounds kind of familiar. But they said he's coming out to Bradenton beginning of October for their last, uh, I guess, for training camp at that point to get ready for, you know, next next season. Cool. So, but there's uh, the tournament we're doing this weekend. Is, I guess it's the actual JUCO tournament that they're, uh, they got all like, I guess, D1 co uh, coaches out looking to recruit a bunch of these JUCO kids. Hmm. So there's, I guess, is a pretty big tournament. I haven't, 
I saw, I was trying to find like a, some info on it, but there's a lot of teams from all over the place coming to this tournament to get in front of some of these coaches to try and move up in, uh, in the ranks of college. Nice. So pretty important for them. So it's kind of equally important for me in, in a way. Heck yeah. So I'll make a go of it. Um, I saw ran to one guy when I went down to Vero beach in April, I think it was down to the MLB, uh, the one day camp they do. Um, there was a, uh, a guy there. I want to say he might be from Dominican, Dominican Republic or something like that. He's definitely, um, he works, you know, winter ball or whatever it is and Racist. in the other country. And then he, they come here and they work, you know, all the other seasons, I guess, whatever it is. So he was already invited back to, um, the MLB actual school. So they actually picked him to go in, in January. Um, but he's here today just trying to get more experience, I guess, under his belt. Huh. Nice. So, yeah. That's cool, man. There's about 25, 25 total in the, in the class. So should be, should be pretty good. Pretty got, good time this weekend. I got my fingers crossed for you. Appreciate it. It's that or the arthritis. I don't know what it is, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're crossed. I'm <laughs> just not sure why yeah. at this point. Who Who is the I'll guy? In, what, uh... I... Oh, go ahead, Joe. I, I did a uh, softball tournament a couple weekends ago um, in Lake City, Florida. It was, I don't know, over 100 degrees out. Oof. Very little, very, very little cloud cover. All I have to do is six games, three in the bases, three on the plate. Um, all consecutive. Um, and like we had, I had just enough time to run to the car, change and get back to the next game between base and plate. Damn. So by, by through game five, I'm starting to feel it. I'm starting to get, I got cramps in places. I'd never had cramps before. And I was like, I've never had that happen to me in, ever. <laughs> uh, following week, I was drinking a lot of water <laughs> to, uh, get myself back to back, back up the bar. So I'm hoping now uh, this weekend is a little more toned down as far as the heat and I can kind of get back into the saddle. Damn. Yeah. Be careful, man. Yeah. It gets, I, I just bought a new uh, Gatorade bottle, man, for being out there. And I picked up a, um, cause I know what you're talking about. I had two back to backs on the bases. Um, no, you know, just hot as hell, no cloud cover. And I was like, you know what? I need a, I need a cooler backpack. So I picked up a, a cheap, like twenty five dollar cooler backpack, um, and I put my and I just got a new Gatorade bottle. But I put like a, I put it in there with some ice and and keep it cold. And then it had a front. I found one with a front snack pocket that I could put my mm. rule book, coin, brush, you know, all that stuff, um, separate from the actual cooler portion. So uh, that's been that's been very helpful. Like, like I said, it was like a, like a $20 solution, you know, that cooler backpack. Yeah. Those cooling towels help out too. Oh yeah. That's on the side of it. <laughs> those are pretty amazing. But, yeah. Yeah. It gets, definitely gets hot out there. I'd tell you it, um, before the last game. So I, the last game for me was they went from uh bracket to pool play or sorry, vice versa, total plot bracket play. So the last game for me was, was a bracket game. And, um, that we had the two teams out there and I pulled a, an old, an old Mike B out and I was dragging. So I, I downed a armor. I, 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 I ate a, um, a, a tangerine orange real quick and I'm getting out in the field. I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm waiting for this stuff to kind of get back in my system. It's kind of start picking me up. So I, I got both teams out in, in the, in the center of the field. And I gave him a, I gave him a, a Ric Flair chant. And uh, afterwards, the coach, the coach uh, banked me. He's like, "Hey, you know, appreciate, it. thanks for that." And I said, "Look, coach, that wasn't for them. That was for me. I needed some energy." <laughs> right? No, man. no doubt. Oh, that's hilarious. But it was a good time. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get away from some of that, you know, six games a day thing, and, and I'd rather get. Um, a different, some, a whole different angle. That's why I'm, I'm going this, this route. So we'll see, we'll see how this goes and where it takes me. This guy yeah. will never do six games. Oh man. No freaking 
way. That's that. That's just increased opportunity for crazy call. Yeah, like, like you know, some I, some nonsense to occur, man. Man's got to know his limitations. I know mine. I'm just happy to get out. I'm not there. gonna. I'm not going to say that there wasn't a call in like the fifth game that <laughs> might the right call. However, comma they went with it, so I went with it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I was Thanks. telling I was telling Andy I had to uh, just yesterday I had to tell somebody about uh, yelling foul from the sideline. Like he yeah. like he yelled foul, and so the kid stopped. But I'm on. I, I had to be like, hey, dude, you know, like I like. I, I called it foul because you did because they stopped. <laughs> you know, I'm on the line here. You can't be doing that. You can't be yelling like that. Yep, that's verbal. That's verbal interference. Yeah. So I, I was like, I let it go this time, man. But next time, don't you know? And he's like, Well, it was foul. I was like, Well, I'm on. I'm on the line. It's man. Not your call, dipshit. Yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to like. I didn't want to create a problem and be like, You're wrong because the white chalk did kick up. I didn't want to. I didn't want to do that and create this whole hassle of re resetting everyone just left it at foul and just said, Hey man, don't be yelling anymore. He was cool. He was like, all right. Yeah. Hey, I understand. You know, he didn't argue, but you know, just it, 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 my point being, I guess is, you know, it can go haywire so quickly. <laughs> it's not even your fault. You know, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I would have called it fair. Sorry. You know, my, what, hand, what hand, my hand was coming out, man. But when I saw the kids like stopped making the play, I was like, "Oh, they got to learn." Fair. Yeah, they got to learn. I know, but it, you know, it just—I so, I don't know. I felt it wasn't fair. In these tournaments, these especially these travel tournaments, I've I've noticed that you can have a day where everything goes great, right? Yeah. No issues, no arguments. You know, you're you're calling a good game. The kids are playing well. There's no discrepancies, even if there's some tough calls that happen on the field. Yeah. But then you got those games or those days where you you find that one coach or a couple of them that just don't really know the rule book. Mm. Like over some very basic things, like if the ball hits the plate off the bat and then goes into fair territory, it's 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 a fair ball. And they're like, oh no, hit hit home plate, it's foul. Like You've been coaching for how long? <laughs> and and this is what you're telling me now? Like, I, I wish we could, like, tell the directors or whatever it is, like, look, this guy should never be a coach. Go ahead and pull his, pull his card or whatever it is. This yeah. is horrible. They sh- there should be kind of minimal coaching skills requirements for those guys. Kind of like, you know, we have some some kind of basic testing or, or whatever. They should, have, they should have something, too. Yeah, because yeah. You, you could be a coach – you just go to go to an organization that has an, an opening in whatever age bracket and say, Hey, I want to put a team together under your organization. And they go, okay, pay your thousand dollars and you're in. Yep. Yeah. All about the money. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, I, you know, I was telling Andy, I said, you know, I got one, in, you know, I haven't used it yet because you know, I, I you know, I, I want to argue so much. I, I, uh, I have to keep myself in check, you know, like make sure I'm diffusing situations, not arguing. But I was telling Andy in my back pocket, you know, you suck. Yeah, my kid knows six four three equals two, coach. <laughs> you know, I mean, I can't count the amount of kid, second baseman I've seen or, or shortstops out there who look like the third apostle when the balls hit to them, like, <laughs> like, like they're the thirteenth apostle out there. Like, oh, 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 what do I do, Jesus? You know, <laughs> you know, I was saying, like, you know, my kid, my kid's not out there like the thirteenth apostle. That's the other one that's in my back pocket. Those are the two. You know? <laughs> just like, where do you get that ball? And the kid's like, "Oh, I thought the shortstop had it." And the coach's like, "You are the shortstop." Yeah. Oh, I'm telling you, man. Uh, all I was out there one day. Dude's complaining to me about uh, uh, me. It was a two man job too, right? He's complaining about both of us. And you're like, how many times should third baseman drop a line drive that was in his glove? In <laughs> it. In it. I mean, I'm gonna check his glove, not for glue, for a goddamn spring. <laughs> 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 like, like someone messed with this kid's glove at night. They had to him. <laughs> like you don't drop shit like this. Like normal people don't drop shit like this. <laughs> so you're saying he was special. I'm saying he sucked. <laughs> <laughs> he belongs in right field. <laughs> you know, I, I've got one last comment and then we'll get out of here. Cause uh, we, we're past our time, but uh, 
Oh, yeah. Hey, thank you for reining us in. Ten, ten you with walkout music is the most ridiculous shit I've ever ah. seen in my life. <laughs> and announcers? How about announcers, right? Like Frank <laughs> talking about broadcasters making, you know, effed up calls or yeah. your calls. But, but announcing the kids batting number 10, Lucas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, my mind's blown. You know, none of your kids, none of them are going to make it to the big leagues. Ah, it's none terrible. of them probably going to play next season. What the hell are you thinking? <laughs> How about the gold chains on the 10? Oh my God. The gold chain. That cracks me up. So bad. <laughs> the gold chains crack me up. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what? You know, I, I, I don't blame the kids. I know, man. He's eight. He's or he's eight. Uh, it, like, that's the other one with the coach pitch, and he's the out coach there pitch, yeah. The circle, and he's got the gold chain in the circle. Yeah. The like, okay. <laughs> you, I just, I just, uh, I want to look at the parents and be like, sell the chain and buy some batting time, <laughs> right? Buy some cage, sell the chain and get some cage time. <laughs> or look at him and say, you didn't play sports as a kid, did you? I don't know, man. I didn't get it, man. I don't get it. The goal trying, man, trying to live through their kids, man. Oh, that's what it yep. is. Anyway, Joseph, that's thanks true. for thanks for calling in, man. Yeah, uh, Joe, we'll talk to you, man. Uh, yeah, you too, guys. We appreciate it, and uh, we'll holler at you next time, my friend. Absolutely. All right, yeah. Lou. Any last words, sir? I don't have any last words, but I'll tell you what, for veterans helping veterans, we'll go back to the well on pinups for vets. My <laughs> friends, get out there to pinups yes. for vets. Support your uh, <laughs> local veteran charity. They always have decks of cards in every combat theater, making any lonely night that much lonelier. <laughs> 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 it's always a problem when, uh, you know, the deck of cards disappears and then you're reminding Marines to change their socks. And like, we've been out of socks for weeks. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, changes. Anyway, pinups for vets providing a service overseas. We're all aware of it. My gosh, get on there, donate, order some stuff, some supplies, get it moving. They're a great charity. Everybody loves them. Pinups for vets.com. Yeah, what he said. All right, we're out of here. Peace out. You're listening to Nothing's Off the Table with Andy and Lou, an Admiral Media production podcast. All information at the time of recording is mostly accurate. Comment below, give five stars, all right. <laughs>